Yes, Coco stole the pretty crystals. Tiny, take them back in Gladiator Arena. Hey everybody, Nostalgia Scott coming to you guys with a brand new Let's Play. Activision presents a smashing blast from the past. Developed by Vicarious Visions. It's Crash Bandicoot! So yeah, we have Crash Bandicoot and Saint Trilogy for the Xbox One. Also available on PC, uh, Switch, PS4, and PC. It's Crash Bandicoot. So yeah. We're going to be doing Crash Bandicoot Warped. Which is my favorite of the three. We're going to go in reverse order because we're going to go in from the ones I know the most to the ones I know the least. is free? No, it cannot be. Evil, great evil has come. None have dared fail the great Uka Uka even once. But you, Cortex, you have failed me twice! Great Uka Uka! It was that infernal bandicoot! From deep inside my temple prison, I sent you simple instructions to follow. But you lost the gems, you lost the crystals, and I have lost my patience! There is now no other power source left on this planet! I know we've had a few unfortunate setbacks. And failed! But since your fumbling has managed to set me free, I am feeling generous. There is still a way to amass the power needed to enslave this miserable planet. And this time, this time, the great Uka Uka will make sure that you do it right! After many eons, my evil twin brother, Uka Uka, has been freed from his underground prison. Long ago, I locked him there to protect the world from his malice. Now, free once again, he must be stopped. Children. Uka Uka and Cortex plan to use this time-twisting machine to gather crystals that lay scattered across time. I have brought you here to recover the crystals before they do. To open the time portal, simply stand on a button and then jump into the portal. Good luck. Ooh, the time twister. So yeah, Uka Uka is free and it's up to Crash Bandicoot here to save the day. Alright, X is to spin, A is to jump, R1 is to slide, same as circle, also if you press circle you can crouch, and crawl really slow, other than that, oh yeah, if you press uh, L2 you can load and save, if you crouch and jump, you jump higher, now, 
Um, there's a few things that I want to do. Invert. Alright, whatever. Whoa! And there we go. Kind of want to turn those down because they're a little loud. So, anyways, the first level is Toad Village. Let's go. Crash, crash, crash. Why must you always muck in my mud? Oh, look! I have a mask helping me, too. We will find out which one is more powerful soon enough. Failing a bonus path does not cost any lives, so feel free to fail. So yeah, we have 42 boxes, and to get a gem, you need to get all the boxes. And yeah, those are your controls, by the way. Every level has a crystal, some levels you can't 100% because you need to get other gems and stuff, and that's just, you know, something that we have no control over. Actually, I want to kind of turn down the volume just a little more. Whoa! I kind of want to keep that. There we go. Oh yeah, that's way more manageable. I'm not going deaf anymore, which is nice. These are checkpoints, so if you die, you'll uh, be able to come back. These ones, if you don't destroy them quickly enough, they will turn to metal and you can't actually destroy them, so don't wait too long. I knew I was able to get it, so don't worry. Spitting enemies into boxes or other enemies will destroy the boxes or kill the other enemies. Getting three Aku Akus will grant you temporary invincibility, and these question mark platforms are bonuses. Unlike Crash 1 and 2, bonuses are a lot different in this game. Like, bonuses were kind of the same in Crash 2, except they resembled Crash 1 a lot more. And a lot of them were just, like, pathways that you could fall down. And stuff like that, so... And there's a set amount of boxes per, uh, like, you know, uh, bonus. And they'll always keep track of the bottom, but you can't see your total boxes until you beat the minigame. And then it'll pop up there when they start adding them to your total. There are also a few types of levels in this game. A lot more variety than there were in 1 and 2. Like, 1 actually had quite a few levels in comparison to other Crash games, because it wasn't uh, 5 levels per world like it used, to, like it is in literally every other Crash game after this, except for... I don't know like how Crash of the Titans, Mind Over Mutant, Twin Sanity and stuff work. I think they're a lot different, but... Crash 2, 3, Wrath, uh, the Game Boy games, all of them, they all have five levels per world, so that, that's what I'm getting at. Why does Neocortex have a bunch of goats? Why, why does he feel the need to have a bunch of goats? And those are the last two boxes, and they're both metal boxes. Ooh. There we go, we got the gem, and the crystal, and that means we 100% the level. And now I have an itchy ear that I gotta scratch, because life is itchy. Eh, eh, eh. Alright, that's better. Stupid itchy ears when you're trying to record, you know? Alright, though, that's another level done. Oh, yeah, I just press triangle to skip over that. Anyways, our next level is an underwater level known as Under Pressure. Oh, yeah, a lot of the levels have puns, by the way. Alrighty. Wait, oh, yeah, you can't become invincible underwater, by the way. Just to let you know, you, you literally cannot become invincible underwater. For whatever reason you can't, but it's just the way the game is. Also, certain levels you can't have Aku Aku in, which also kind of sucks. Uh, there's vehicle levels and Coco levels, they don't allow you to have uh, invincibility. Or just Aku Aku in general. Oh, I thought I got hit there, but I didn't. Weird. Oh, pardon me, Mr. Mine and Puffer Fishy. A lot of these first levels are really easy, especially in comparison to um, Crash 1 and 2, which difficulty wasn't really super hard, but it was a lot more difficult than this game, per se. Also, you can press the A button to fire. You can also press the circle button to dash with this. I don't want to dash because a lot of time it gets you killed, and you don't want to die, you know? Who wants to die? Unless you want to die on purpose because you miss something in a level that you can't backtrack to. So then I guess that's the thing. There's also 92 boxes here, which is kind of crazy for level 2. You can also destroy the mines, but once you get to these small tubes, you can no longer use the, uh... I forgot what they call that thing. It has a name. 
But it is a super cool gadget they can use to deal with underwater levels a lot easier. Hello, Mr. Fish. Alright, let me just casually avoid this mine and get my uh, machine back again, because I don't know why they ever stopped giving to you in the first place. I guess this challenges. Maybe this just makes it too easy, I don't know. But this thing's just really fun. It, it, like, it destroys a ton of things. It kills every enemy. It allows you to get boxes super easy. It destroys nitro crates, which will injure you if you touch them, by the way. I don't think we actually ran into nitro yet. I don't even actually know when you find nitro for the first time in this game. We're only missing one box now, and it's right there. And there we go, there's the gem, and another level 100% complete. Not too shabby. Alright, there we go. Beautiful. Thank you for the uh, crystal. And thank you for the gem. Alright, level 3 is a Coco level called Orient Express. And when you try and jump in it, Crash Bandicoot will just fall right through. Alrighty. Let's do this. And obviously A is to jump and B is to run fast. You can also hold down uh, X, which I feel is way better than holding down B, because it's because your thumb's already over top of the A button anyway. See you can have Aku here, but you can't get Aku here. It's also another level where you can't get invincibility. There's also 51 boxes here, which is actually, I think, the most out of any of these Coco levels. Also, these Chinese dragons, which are segmented, kind of remind me of the dragons from Spyro. But I think Spyro came out after. I think Warped came out in 99, while I think Spyro 3 came out in 2000. It was one of the last... Uh... God darn, I'm going to have to lose my Aku Aku. Because I just didn't grab that box. I'm an idiot. So now I lost my Aku Aku. That's, that sucks, man. So then we need to jump up on this one to get these boxes up here. We're almost done the level, which isn't too bad. Oh, there's the crystal. One of the big goals of this. To beat the game, you need crystals. To get 100%, you need the gems, too. But gems aren't actually needed to beat the, all the levels until you want to get to the last five bonus levels. Which then require, which requires you to get all, all the gems, so that's the thing. Now we can just bum rush to the end. Well, I thought we died there for a second, but it just got stuck on the wall and it got dark. I believe this cat's name is Pura. And there we go, another level done. Three levels done in 12 minutes, including a pretty lengthy intro. Oh yeah, and she has her own little dance too. We'll see what it is here. She tries to be like Crash, but it's kind of corny. Anyways, those relic things that you see up there, we're going to get them later because right now they're not very practical. Anyways, on to level 4, we have Boneyard, which I don't believe we can get the second gem here. Uka Uka and Cortex want tiny get crystals and bring them to big Colosseum in Rome. Crash! Leave them for Tiny, or Crash get crashed! Okay. Yeah, we need the red gem. Which we get in a water level. Yeah, so infamous since Crash 1, there's been these chase levels. And in this game, we get chased by a Triceratops. Which is pretty intense, honestly. Being chased by a giant dinosaur. It is kind of cool, though, that this game has way more level variety than the other Crash games do. It includes even the ones that came after it. Because the other ones all kind of follow like a theme. While this game is like across time, so you could have done so many things. I wish some medieval levels were a little different though, to kind of fit the whole medieval theme a little more, but sadly it's not the case. There's 66 boxes here too. Man, we could add invincibility if I didn't have to die in that one level. Uh, let me jump over that. TNT will detonate after three seconds, and they will hurt you if you're in its blast radius. But you guys kind of probably figured that. Like, that's not very hard to figure out. Oh god, what the heck was... Why did I jump again? I wasn't even holding the A button. It's just... Yeah, see, there's the platform for the red gem. We don't have that yet, so we can't go back to this. Or we have to come back to this. We can't get it yet. 
All right, let's grab this before we deal with the Nitro. Yeah, Nitro's here. That'll instantly damage you. It's essentially TNT, but way more annoying. So just be careful with that. Oh, hello, buddy. Sucks to be you. And we got the bonus platform. Yeah, the underwater levels, the cocoa levels, and vehicle levels all don't have uh, um, bonus platforms. So don't worry about that. Alrighty, though. Ooh, that's a lot of Wumpa Fruit. 100 Wumpa Fruit, by the way, give you life. I don't know if I said that. I want to knock it down so there's only three boxes left, so then you can jump up there. Also, if you press circle while jumping, you'll do a body slam. And then if you do the slide, you can crawl under things like that. So then they don't get in your way. And there we go. Bonus level 100%. It looks like we're going to get two lives from that. I'm still missing some of the achievements on here, so if they pop up, that'd be pretty cool to show you guys that I'm still getting achievements in this game, because I only got this... I got this back when... I think the beginning of January, I think. They also activate other crates around the way, and that's not what I wanted. That's what I wanted, thank you very much. Hey, we got another life. We got 20. Oh, looks like we're going to have another dino chase se sequence here pretty soon. Man, we're only gonna need, what, like, eight boxes? That's pretty good. Oh god, pterodactyls. There is gonna be one specific pterodactyl you have to run into, though, in one level, and I'll do that probably, like, on our second playthrough of it, because I'm gonna have to remember which level it is, because there's three of these dinosaur levels. And I don't remember which one it is that has the pterodactyl that we need to touch. Whoops. I thought that was the nitro switch for a second, so I was like, oh yeah, let me just inherently spin into it. But there we go, there's... The gem. Okay, I was an idiot. By the way, we have the gem even though we don't have all the boxes. Funny how that works, right? So we don't need to grab those anymore. Plus a lot of the time they'll actually destroy all the boxes for you. Okay, this should be the nitro part where I accidentally span into it because... Span? Spun into it, like jeez louise. Anyways, thank you. I'm out of here. Don't know what I was thinking, but there we go, another level done. Well, done for the time being. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyways, now we can go to level 5, which is Making Waves, which is another Coco level, as seen by the picture of Coco. Complete the course. Alright. So, there's only 37 uh, boxes here. This is a pretty easy one. One of the bonus levels, which is one of these, is extremely difficult. Funny, because most of the bonus levels aren't that bad, but that one, oh boy, is it just... It's just stupid. I don't like how it's designed at all. I just... I'm dreading that one. As for the rest of it, I don't really care. It's, it's not that bad at all. Like, most of this game, I actually enjoy every single level. Uh-oh. Get out of my way, dude. Thank you. I wanted this checkpoint. Now watch out for these cannon shooting skull cannonballs at you, because they kind of hurt. As, you know, kind of predicted, because they're cannonballs. Of course, kind of. Also, that seagull can kill you if you wait too long to grab that box and then do it when he comes back down. He will actually take you away. Like, he'll literally grab you by your shoulders and pick you up, because. Okay, that was just dumb. Not, not, not the game being dumb, that was just dumb on me. I knew that was going to happen, and I still did it anyway. I'm like, oh, yeah, no. You know what? It's not that big of a deal. So I was, like, so close. I guess we're not even that close to actually being done the level. But we do have the uh, crystal, which is kind of cool. One thing I do find cheesy about the Crash games, if you collect them and then die, you'll keep them. Which I always thought kind of made certain parts a little easy. People said that was an issue with Wrath of Cortex, but this is an issue with Crash Bandicoot in general. Whoa. I don't remember that bomb getting that dangerously close to that section of the area, but okay. Yahoo! Oh man, come on. Uh, are, you, yeah. are you serious? Why does it sometimes go on an angle, you notice that? Well, let's jump. Yeah. Yeah. 
Alright, we only need six more boxes, so that's pretty good. Oh, we got another Robo. Scariest enemy by far, the dreaded Robo. Not the Skull Bombs or the Skull Cannonballs, but, you know. And there we go. Another 100%. I think we can take on the boss before we end the episode. Yeah, these episodes will probably be a lot shorter than the Spire ones just because of how the game's set up. Way easier to make them better lengths and stuff like that. And there we go. Now we can go take on... Tiny Tiger in the Coliseum in Rome. Rash! Coco! Stole the pretty crystals! Tiny, take them back in Gladiator Arena! You guys see that weird visual glitch where it flashed white for a second? Yeah, I've never actually had that on this game before. That was the first time that's ever happened. This is being played on the Xbox, not an emulator, not on PC, not on Switch. Because the Switch version has a constant issue with the controller permanently vibrates. And that's a well-known fact, and it's been like that for years now. Tiny, you have a pretty tiny health bar. Actually, every boss in this in this Crash series always seems to have three health, except for um, Engine, which for whatever reason always has way more. Even though I always liked his fights, it's kind of weird. Oh no, he has a bunch of lions, which is kind of weird considering he's a tiger, don't you think? Goodbye. He himself is actually really easy to deal with. The biggest threat are literally those lions. Other than that, he's a really big joke of a boss fight. Just spin into him when he gets stuck, and that's it. Well, I've always got like a rack of tridents up there. So many lions. Or lions? Yeah, lions. He's the tiger. I was almost confused myself there for a second. The ground shake is pretty intense, too. Also, I love all the, all the scientists back there look the same. Some just have different colored hair, same haircut, same glasses, same everything, and Tiny was Trounce, buddy. Now I've got the Super Body Slam. Supercharged Body Slam. Woohoo! And we got teleported out. Not too bad. Well done, children. By defeating Tiny, you have unlocked the gate to the next time travel area. Go back to the center of this time twister and save your progress if you wish. From there, you will see that the gate to the second time travel area is now open. Alright. So that means in the next episode, we'll be starting World 2, which looks like either... I think it's like a Middle Eastern theme. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and I'll see you guys next time. Join the Discord and Patreon in the description below.